Hey everybody, good morning. It's Monday, the 9th of September 2013. It is my wedding anniversary, uh, 13 years ago today. My wife uh, Chanda and I got married right here at Clopepe, and so it's a special day for us. I was kind of hoping that uh, we would get to our anniversary before harvest this year, and even though we've harvested 1% of the vineyard, Pinot Noir, for sparkling wine through Flying Goat and uh, Goat Bubbles, uh, in Lompoc. We're very excited that uh, cool weather has persisted. We expected a uh, warm-up this weekend uh, that never really uh, never really materialized. We had sort of a, a recurrence of the marine layer which you can see burning off behind us so I wanted to capture that so you could sort of see sort of the uh, uh, summer to the east and uh, the Pacific Ocean to the west sort of fighting it out behind my head. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, on our Monday video about when to pull the trigger. Um, which is probably the most important decision a winemaker can make in the entire year. Uh, harvest is really, and the wine and the vintage is all dictated by the moment that you pull the grapes off the, off the uh, vine and bring them to the winery. So what is it that drives us to make these harvest decisions? Well, first of all, I think the first uh, most imp and maybe the most important idea is r obviously ripeness and style. Uh, the earlier you pick uh, your grapes, the higher the acidity is going to be and the lower the alcohol. And the later you pick your grapes, the higher the alcohol and uh, the lower the acidity. You can also argue that the longer that the grapes hang, the more flavor, uh, more color are going to develop in cool regions. So here in the Santa Rita Hills, we can let the grapes hang really, really long because our acid just does not disappear. I've seen crazy numbers like uh, 27, 28 bricks at 3.18 pH on this vineyard. So it, it lends itself to the idea that you really need to let it hang to sort of exacerbated ripeness to get uh, acid balance, which just isn't true. You can make delicious wines here at 23 or 24 bricks. They're just going to be highly structured with good acid. So this year we kind of have this interesting situation, which is beautiful. We have uh, lower ripeness numbers. Our numbers from this morning's tests were between 22.5 and 23.5 bricks at about exactly 3.17 pH. Everything we tested this morning was between 3.15 and 3.2 pH. And that's about probably 8.5 grams of acid, which is just under the level of acid you expect in a really crisp Sauvignon Blanc or maybe even a sparkling wine. So we don't want to make a red wine that, uh, that punishes the people that drink it because because it's, uh, it's very acidic. So what we want to do is wait uh, at least another week until the pH gets up about 3.3. The acid is maybe under 8 grams a liter. And our bricks is going to probably be about uh, mid-24s. And I think that's going to probably be our first pick. And then we'll let, let some of the other grapes hang till about 20, high 24s. And then the last pick will probably wait until the grapes get into the 25s, depending on what the weather does. If it's nice and cool, we can be very, very deliberate about it. So a cool vintage is more about what the winemaker decides. Well, sometimes if you get a big heat spike and a, you know, obviously a little heat, you know, big uh, heat wave, you have to pick. And then that way, sort of nature is sort of deciding for you. It's time to pick. So the cooler it is, I think the more of it, more uh, sort of decisions uh, the winemaker has to make and the more dependent on those decisions will be the final uh, style of the wine. And in the hotter vintages, the weather pushes us to pick. So right now it looks like we're going to get a little warmer later in the week, but then we're going to go back into a nice cool phase, which is going to be hopefully a perfect time to start bringing in the first grapes. So again, when we look at these picking decisions, when to pull the trigger, in Chardonnay, uh, we're looking for uh, flavors in the juice, uh, kiwi and uh, some of uh, lemon and lime blossom and that really, really strong citrus flavor begins to soften a little bit. One thing that I always tell young winemakers is if you taste the juice and you know what you're looking for, uh, that's really, you know, that confidence is going to be important. Uh, if you don't know what you're looking for, my kind of suggestion is twofold. One is look for the color of the seeds to darken to at least 75% nut brown and wait until the juice tastes candy sweet. Generally, when I taste the juice and it's ready, it is clearly ready. It's not a matter of, ooh, is that ready? You taste the fruit and my, you're like, my goodness, it is candy sweet and it is ready to make wine. Remember Dr. Patrick McGovern? said that the, most imp uh, the reason why wine is the most important uh, fermented beverage on the planet um, is because wine grapes have the highest amount of fermentable sugar as any fruit on, on the planet Earth. 
So that level of sweetness should be stunning. You should, uh, should be significantly higher than any supermarket grape you've ever tasted, which are usually about the same level of ripeness as uh, champagne grapes. So, uh, you know, uh, supermarket grape, about 20 bricks. We want at least 25% more sugar in the grape than that, uh, moving from 20 bricks to up to about 24 to 25. So over the next week or so, uh, next Monday, we'll probably be talking about uh, the numbers that I got, and we'll be getting ready to pick some of our first estate fruit. But for now, I think you've uh, had a good primer on sort of the idea of how to make these decisions. Uh, kind of brown seeds, candy sweetness, beautiful sort of balance of sweetness and acidity. And obviously, besides the flavor, you have to look at the numbers. Uh, any winemaker who says they don't do field testing that they pick uh, solely by taste, um, I question their sanity and I question their honesty. I think every winemaker that I know and respect uses a combination of knowing what flavors are looking for, looking at vine physiology, seeing a little dimpling in the fruit. All of these things lead us to uh, our final decision to pull the trigger. And once you've pulled those grapes and they're in a bin and they're ready for processing, I would say the character of that vintage has been defined. You can tweak it a little bit, you can do this and do that, add enzymes, you know, add acid, add water, but really the moment we pick really will define exactly the type of wines we're going to make in 2013. I'm trying to be a little patient this year, allow the grapes to develop a little more flavor. I don't think the uh, level of acid yet uh, has softened enough to uh, make a palatable red wine. So in a week we'll talk about this again and see where we are. Other than that, have a fantastic week. I'm going to take half a day off and hopefully spoil the hell out of my wife. Have a great time and we'll see you next Monday. Bye everybody.